Live from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in New York City. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal and noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. And we are here as part of Big Data NYC in conjunction with Strata Hadoop. We are live in New York City, one block from the Javits Center, and we're here with uh, two special guests, Ryan Peterson, Chief Solution Strategist at EMC, and Tom Riley, the CEO of Cloudera. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. Great Good to be here, John. Good, Good to be here with Ryan. Great to see you. Uh, Tom, Cloudera, obviously, it's a show that's been starting the whole e ecosystem. You know, we were there, President of Creation, seven years ago watching Cloudera. Even when they were in stealth a few years earlier, Amr was at Excel Partners, kind of doing his thing. Mike comes together, Jeff Hammerbach, all these guys came together at the time. Who the hell is Cloudera? What is Hadoop? You know, mm -hmm. Insa Gray was an early investor. I was talking with him yesterday, and we were talking about what was on the mind of those investors early on, because right now we're at that same tipping point where Hadoop was not known, became known, the hype cycle, now it's here. The show is all about value right now, so mm -hmm. we're, see, we're hearing that message. I want to get your take on theCUBE here. What does that theme mean for you guys, and what is the key message that you guys are sharing and sending and hearing at the event? Well, thank you, John, for that history. Um, and, and one thing I'll show the history, I think, uh, the, the early founders of Cloudera had some great foresight when they set up Hadoop World, not as a single company event. It's an event we sponsor, but it's a community event. And to see the hundreds of companies here, and the most exciting one are all the new companies that are starting and emerging here, just shows how much innovation is being done by this broad community. And if it weren't for the community, we wouldn't be creating all this amazing value in such a short amount of time. At this event, we're celebrating Hadoop is 10 years old. Mm -hmm. 10 years old, there are a few industries that are having such an impact on businesses, whether through operational efficiency or delivering transformative applications on a platform at a scale as we're seeing with Hadoop in the community. And it's because of all these different organizations coming together, contributing to this project, that we're seeing uh, this amazing value be delivered so quickly. It's interesting, you know, we've been here now seven, it's our sixth year um, with theCUBE, and every year it's, is Hadoop real? Is Hadoop real? Mm -hmm. Again, this year, is it real? But it's not only is it real and relevant, you're seeing an abstraction where value's now being created outside of Hadoop because the ecosystem has changed significantly. So I got to get your take. We're here with EMC, a big whale. It's whale season here in, in, in the big data <laughs> world as we were saying earlier in theCUBE. The ecosystem isn't just startups anymore. It has grown in the past you know, yeah. so 10 years, a historic rise in value creation, mm -hmm. but it's just beginning, right? So I want you to put some color around that ecosystem growth and what that means to customers, because customers want stuff faster. They want yeah. the technology faster, they want outcomes faster. Yeah, so um, I, I think, you know, someone asked me earlier, you know, did, did Hadoop catch the market by surprise? Uh, that's not actually what happened. The demand for a solution such as ours is, has pulled this market. Because what we're seeing is not only the explosion of data that we're all familiar with, but enterprises are truly wanting to become information driven, and they're wanting to get value out of all their data. And so you take a look at why our partnership with EMC is so important. For years, these large enterprises have been putting all their data into Isilon. And now they want to get value out of it. And that's where Hadoop comes in, mm -hmm. and with the, the co-development work that we've done and the tests we've done, we're like saying, okay, let's bring computation to that Isilon storage. Mm -hmm. And what, what Isilon is, is it's the world's biggest data lake, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And now we can get value out of it. Ryan, and it's wanna, happening everywhere. Ryan, I want to ask you, because we had EMC on earlier in the queue, and Bill Schmarzo and Aidan O'Brien yeah. were talking about some of the big data, and the quote was, big data is a team sport. <laughs> and, and you know, because we always talk about sports metaphors, yeah. ESPN of tech, the cube. But more importantly, the integration aspects of data. What's your take on that? Because that means you guys store a lot on your drives, and yep. everyone knows you guys have got great storage. Mm -hmm. You have a relationship with Cloudera. Talk about that relationship and, and the level of relationship. I and mean, obviously it's a community, everyone, everything's transparent. So just lay out your relationship with Cloudera and expand. Is it kind of a thin relationship, a deep relationship? Is it development, joint sharing, is there IP? Can you just go into detail about the relationship? Yeah, a, that is a great question, John. So we, uh, you know, we started this relationship a couple of years back and uh, it, was, it was obviously a slow start, right? We kind of figure out where do we play together? 
together and those things. And uh, what was really impressive to me is, is Cloudera didn't just say, hey, let's, let's work with Isilon, let's figure out how to make it uh, function, do joint testing, and, and let's stop there. Like most of our, our partnerships, frankly, are. It's just you know, test and validate, see if it works. They went to the next level and said, you know, we want to make it easy for our customers. And this was Cloudera, it's like Cloudera's customers to be able to hit a button that says, hey, we, we're using Isilon. And, and so inside of Cloudera Manager, there's a button for Isilon. You click the button and it just deploys and it's ready to go and, and, and you're done. So that, that simplicity of usage was, I think, really the, the most powerful thing that Cloudera brought to the table. And so, so our integration is not just at a superficial level, it's a deep development, uh, of code development really effort. And, and we, we want to continue to move that uh, relationship forward that way. So Tom, your take on teams, team sport, because this talks to customer value and, and the word outcomes, insights that was out there last year, certainly mm -hmm. insights, get insights out of the data, but when you start talking outcomes, that's code words for, I have a big fat check I want to write, I want value, yep. mm -hmm. and I don't really care how things are assembled, you guys figure out your relationships, I just want it to work. Yes. Are you finding that that's the customer orientation, that's customer driven uh, that way, or is the customer just saying, you figure it out, Cloudera, EMC, you're our vendor for storage, Cloudera's the big data guys, figure it out. What's the customer narrative to that? Did I get that right, and what's the view there? We're in the midst of that trend. If you were at this event three or four years ago, uh, we were all talking about these very technical projects. Mm -hmm. We were talking about how they stitched together and why they were faster, or why they were lower cost. Today, and Mike Olson said it this morning, we're no longer talking about pig, scoop, and flume. We're talking about business use cases driving real mm -hmm. value. We're talking about churn reduction, anti-money laundering, fraud, mm -hmm. saving lives by detecting sepsis in hospitals, mm -hmm. the connected cars. And in the discussion, and what Mike said is, Hadoop is fading into the background, mm -hmm. and what's coming forward are these transformative applications, changing industry, changing lives, saving lives, mm -hmm. right? Protecting identity, and we're just going on and on, these powerful use cases, and those use cases now are the discussion we're having, not the, the technology underneath it. All right, let's, let's talk about what the customer's view is. We heard also on theCUBE, Ryan, and, and I want to get your thoughts on this. Creativity. Yes. Creativity is driving. We saw in the keynotes the creativity of a weekend and some caffeine, and you got you know, Guess My Age from Azure, Microsoft on stage. You know, all these kinds of, there's many examples. There are too numerous to, to, to say, but basically creativity is unleashed. New use cases are popping up. Internet of Things is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. That's certainly being hyped up. But there are new use cases. So I got to ask you a question. Data is, the competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So there's two approaches. Do you hoard the data, or do you open the data up? Yeah. And so this is a big dilemma, because the old world was data is power. Yeah. In the new world, sharing is power. Yeah. So how do customers resolve this? Or do they care? Is it algorithms that do it? What's the deal? It, it, you know, honestly, this is uh, something I'm really passionate about. I, I, you, you struck that uh, euphoric nerve in my head. I'm now thinking about <laughs> how, to how excited this is. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, I think uh, you know, big data allowed us to do a couple things. One is bring all that data to one place. But secondly, with tools like Clutter and Hadoop, start to score and classify that data to understand what you have, uh, what, what security information what's uh, what contains personal identifiable information, PII, uh, what things would, uh, would break security uh, controls, all these different things. And now you can get to the point where you say, you know what, that data is really valuable, but unfortunately not to me, it's really valuable to a, a partner of mine. Now how do, I, how do I share that information becomes I think the yeah. next big question, the next big step that we need to figure out. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of things, governance and security and permissions, but. I'd love to share just one great use case I'm very familiar with. So I love the cybersecurity space because I used to run a cybersecurity company. Mm -hmm. But today, you can no longer uh, have signatures in advance of attacks. You have to do anomaly detection, behavior analysis. Mm -hmm. If you see an anomaly, right, you, you respond to that. Well now, there's a, there's a great partner of ours called ThreatStream where companies, when they detect an anomaly, they can share it to peer companies. And so I detected this and you might be affected by the same attack. Mm -hmm. And so no longer are the vendors you know, creating these signatures, it's these anomalies and then they're sharing them and that's a perfect example. Yeah, we're, we're seeing this with banks. Uh, we have lots of conversations with banks and we say, well, hey, are you guys willing to share data because it seems like something that's uh, probably one of the most secure information you have. And you know what the answer is? Yes to remove fraud from the, the environment, we would be happy to share information for that. So moment. I got to throw some concept out there, um, just kind of made this up, but it was from another concept we talked earlier is, 
will there be an SLA on data? And let me, let me caveat mm. that, meaning, this, let's just say you have data, you put it into a Hadoop, it's in a data lake, and you run a report, it's a system of record, you pull it out, you get stuff a day later, you know, a mm. week later, mm. maybe a couple hours later. That's a different value, because you can store it in a low cost storage, on your storage, or a commodity open source, you move compute to, mm. that, to the data, we've been there, that was four years ago. Now you have engagement data, you have credit card transactional data. Now you have systems of intelligence, which Wikibon's been promoting heavily, mm -hmm. where machine learning and new stuff's happening that are going to change the game on speed to um, notification value. Meaning, mm -hmm. if I am a human being, I only have 100 milliseconds in my head to click a button. Mm -hmm. That's recommendation engines, we've seen that right, stuff. Yeah. I mean, Jeff Hammerbacher said, the brightest minds are working on ad tech, which essentially, click on an ad, the right yeah, ad at yeah, the right yeah, time. Yeah. But that's a human equation. Yeah. When you get into the machine equation, you're talking about huge speed advances, more than 100 milliseconds than mm -hmm. the humans can handle. Mm -hmm. Will that new systems of intelligence change the game on the value of the data, and will that impact the ecosystem and offer opportunities? So I think this goes right back to your creativity concept earlier. We can't imagine how our lives are going to change because data and insight can be delivered at the time of interaction. Whether that's our human interaction down to machines interacting and making decisions or altering things based on some insight. We can't think of them. Like, today we're doing things, um, someone swipes a credit card and then they get an SMS text saying, did you really want to make that purchase? It's odd before that purchase is completed, yeah. right? That is pretty powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't have thought of that use case five years ago mm -hmm. because the technology didn't exist. One thing I do know, when you look at the roadmap and you look at the pace of innovation, one of the areas that's moving fastest is the speed of computation, mm -hmm. right? As we're moving things into memory and, and Intel's yeah. making these specific Streaming, chips. Streaming, all this stuff. Yeah. yeah, so I don't think the SLA is going to be how fast can we produce it. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, I think the technology is going to outpace our ability to think of those Are you guys cases. hearing customers say, will there be an SLA for data, service level agreement for data? I mean, are they getting advanced enough? Are they still just kind of doing reps on basic stuff right it now? Certainly depends on the customer. Uh, we have some customers who say, you know, we, we need SLAs because we're already there. Uh, just Dr. Customer was talking about how they, they have an internal marketplace of their data sets. And in that case, the SLA started to come a uh, conversation. Uh, other people are earlier on in their journey and they're, they're just kind of developing where is their data and how they get it in and what are the component trees needed. And, and those customers are, are yeah. less, less interested in what the SLA is and more how do they get value. And so it is sort of a, a journey of process that these guys take to get there. One question I'd like to ask you, Tom, because Cloudera, I think, is the perfect um, poster child from this company that lives in this era of living in the future but operating in the present. Hmm. I mean, every, every interaction I've had going back, you know, 10 years ago with the Cloudera folks is, you're always, you guys are way ahead because you're looking at stuff with Cloudera that's really futuristic, mm -hmm. but not operationalized. EMC is operationally relevant in every major enterprise, so this balance between living in the future <laughs> and operating in the present, as CEO, that must be challenging, yeah. one to begin with culturally, but how do you handle that and how does a customer bring that innovation strategy to their world? Yeah, so I think, you know, this is, exactly the role and value proposition we're supposed to play as one of the companies in, in this movement. It goes back to a lot of this innovation originated in Google. And building uh, Apache Hadoop and then building distributions and testing it in documentation and training is to help every other enterprise get there, right? And get there in the shortest amount of time. And so uh, there's so much innovation happening here at Hadoop World. You look at all these new companies. And one of our roles and our responsibility is to help curate, mm -hmm. to help test, to help integrate, mm -hmm. to make sure it interoperates, it's well tested, and there's security that goes across all these different projects, and then bring that to enterprises so they get value out of it. Ryan, I got to ask you, I heard Mike Olson's keynote today, I always watch Mike's because it's always a, a tip to the future, and he always mm -hmm. kind of telegraphs a little bit of his moves, like a, like a poker tell. Um, and, <laughs> but he's really talking about- I tell him not to do that. You know, <laughs> <laughs> well, we know him too well, he's a great, he's a great guy. Because he, he can't, he has to leave a little bread print, <laughs> Easter egg out there. Um, Mike, if you're watching, we, we got your tell sign. Um, but his tell sign clearly is, the value is coming now. This is time, rubber's hitting the road, meat on the bone, customers want value now. We've been now on, in the 10 year anniversary, mm -hmm. so hey, congratulations, pat ourselves on the back, but let's get back down to business. Yeah. And the business is, I have to deliver value because the customers now 
want stuff now. Yeah. So that brings up the equation of what is that innovation? How do you talk to customers and you say, hey, we got your, you just say, hey, we got your back, don't worry about it, we're tight with Cloudera. What's the development plan with Cloudera? What are you guys doing to get the, your customers' backs? So, so first of all, I'll agree with that. I think that there's this uh, concept like a vertical business uh, gravity of solutions. And the concept there is that you've got uh, telecommunications organizations that have been using big data for a while and each one has a different use case. Well, those use cases start to get shared uh, amongst mm -hmm. each other and all of a sudden now, you know, hey, there's, there's a big opportunity around solutionizing, is that a word? I don't know, solutionizing <laughs> opportunities around telco and then same as within banking and the same starts to happen in healthcare and I think that's a, a, big, a big movement. Uh, what we've been finding is that uh, as customers have started to hit certain limitations of what Hadoop does today, like you talked about SLAs, they're asking for the next generation of technology. What, what, maybe it's a, a Kudu, maybe it's a, a new application that's uh, yet to be built or maybe it's a new technology. And so uh, one thing we've done is we've, we've worked with Cloudera now to, to start building a new technology yeah. uh, that EMC has, has been working on for quite some time. We can't say what it is yet, but uh, um, look for it. And, right, just and, a little uh, tease. Look for it in a little bit, in a few, a few well, months. The, the intent so is So you're writing to, code with Cloudera. Joint, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Joint software development. Joint software development. And, uh, and the intent is to uh, try and make the fastest possible Hadoop cluster on the planet to really uh, solve some of the latency challenges that we've seen in the past with, with Hadoop. Uh, to go after new workloads, things like say Monte Carlo simulation over the top of Hadoop in, in a latency and performance mm -hmm. application that you wouldn't normally see with a traditional architecture. So we're really trying to, to work with Cloudera to yeah. find that cutting edge balance. Uh, EMC, uh, as you said earlier, we're, we're, uh, we are play the balance of how do we innovate and at the exact same time maintain that very stable control. And it's, a, it's because we have uh, these, this idea of emerging technologies group and we, we kind of push that, those boundaries. Tom, talk about your growth strategy. Okay, you guys are, haven't, haven't filed an IPO yet. Some are speculating, you will. I've said on theCUBE, you'll never sell because I know the founders <laughs> don't want to sell. They want to build a durable company and, and be that next name. So that's my prediction, Cloudera will never sell. Someone on Facebook, well, the number can be high. Thank but, you for but, answering but, your question. But, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I mean, you, you IPO and build a sustainable company, that's the founder of the vision. Could, you guys could have sold many times, I know that. Um, but the reality is you're, you still have a growth strategy. Valuation is $4 billion. What about your ecosystem and, and your growth strategy relative to the product and ecosystem? Because it, with EMC and your other partners, you guys are doing a lot of joint development. You're doing a lot of ecosystem work on the biz dev side. Is that fundamental part of your growth strategy? What is the Cloudera growth strategy for the company? Yeah, so um, uh, you answered it better than I could <laughs> in your question. Um, so we are going to be a long-term enduring business. Uh, and the market wants us to be a long-term enduring business that works with an ecosystem of partners that builds, that allows for best of breed decisions at every level of the stack. So what we know, realize is that we are a platform provider, but our customers want solutions. And so that solution layer comes from our ecosystem of partners. And, and we work with them to, to deliver the complete solution. And the customers, like to see the vendors come together mm -hmm. and say, we've done the integration. That's mm -hmm. the development work. We're doing code development work to do the integration. Therefore, a customer gets value in a quick amount of time. How many co-development deals you have right now going on with other partners? We, um, we, we have a number of code development deals. Uh, we have a very large organization called Partner Engineering that does certification of our mm -hmm. integrations. Um, I, I think uh, our relationship with EMC is different than our, our broader set. Um, this is a partnership we're very committed to, and so we want to do some very unique things. Yeah, storage is, is not dead. Obviously, it's been over a decade, two decades, storage was supposed to be killed two years, two decades ago, but mm -hmm. you know, uh, well, you know, now I, the storage fabric. People keep know? up with storage. You know, hey, hey, you got to store the data somewhere. We look at it at very selfishly, yeah. right? We have no value if we don't have data. Uh, there's a lot mm. of data in our partner here. Yeah. And so yeah. uh, we bring value to their data, which brings value to our customers. One of our first CUBE interviews was Joe Tucci, and I said, Joe, storage sexy, storage sexy. Uh, and, and, but I, Dave, Dave was laughing, <laughs> but the reality was we saw then, storage isn't going away. Yeah. There'll be different layers of storage and different intelligence, and so um, you know, that's how it's going to be an integral part. Um, final question on the um, disruptive technologies. What do you guys mm. see right now? as a disrupt, obviously Spark is the center of the conversation here uh, at Strata Hadoop and Big Data NYC. So what is, what is the, uh, besides Spark, what disruptive technologies do you see really taking us to the next level fast? Because the growth is significant across the board, not only for uh, the, the companies EMC, Cloudera, but the entire ecosystem. 
customers want it deployed now in production all the time? It's a, it's a challenging question for me, as I'll say that uh, I, I look at all of these individual projects that come up with an Apache as somewhat disruptive to the previous version, the previous uh, possible solution, uh, but I don't look at them as hugely industry uh, changing. I think it's more product uh, the, the Hadoop changing. Uh, so I, I really think the disruptive technologies, the things around things like data sharing and data monetization, mm -hmm. um, the application development frameworks that are seeing uh, pulled up now to take the, the content that we're creating from all this big data, the value, uh, the insights, and turning that into actionable uh, uh, data sets and then repeatable applications. To me, that's the things that's really changing, changing the business. Tom, disruptive and enabling technologies that you see that you're excited about? Well, so, so um, People like to think that, that Hadoop is all about you know, HDFS and MapReduce. In the, in the past few years, it, is, it has evolved so quickly, right? And the most recent example is around Spark, and everyone's so excited about streaming and, and the machine learning capabilities. And there's going to be more and more innovation. And none of it, I think all that innovation makes this ecosystem of projects increasingly more disruptive mm -hmm. and more capable. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things that um, I think uh, industry starting to understand is that this uh, community of projects has many years of legs to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a lot to do to make it mature, more stable, more mm -hmm. manageable, and mm -hmm. then new workloads keep coming on. And so, um, and Spark is the most recent example. Uh, we are fascinated with uh, the uptake of Spark in our customer base. What's the Cloudera's position on Spark? Uh, what's your official statement on Spark? Uh, I know Mike, Mike addressed it in his keynote today. What, what is, you're going to continue investing in it, funding it, partnering yes. with it? What is the Cloudera role of Spark? Because that's a real hotbed right now. Um, well, our roles, we're very committed to it. We're very committed to the project. Uh, you know, we're the first to introduce it into a distribution. We believe it will be the standard uh, in, in this set of capabilities. Uh, we announced our one platform initiative where we've taken all of our enterprise class things, whether it's systems management, data governance, security, um, things like we introduced Kudu today, we introduced record service, and we, those mm -hmm. work automatically with uh, Spark. So our one platform initiative says that Spark is going to play a front and center role. Uh, we believe that uh, all future Jobs won't be written in MapReduce, they'll be written in Spark, and a lot of old jobs will still exist in MapReduce, but everything new is going to move to Spark. All right, final, uh, final question. Put the bumper sticker on uh, Strata Hadoop this year. What's the car, bumper sticker on the car read this year? You get to summarize the show in one bumper sticker. We're finally talking about business value. Okay, business value. Here with the CEO of Cloudera and Ryan from EMC, Ryan Peterson. We'll be right back with more right after this short break, live in New York City for Big Data NYC and Strata and Hadoop. We'll be right back. <laughs>